In the last episode, I talked about the first entry in the Tenkaichi series, its origins and the rough but unique combat system. So if you're interested in seeing that episode, I will have that link right above the video. For today's video, we're going to be looking at its successor, Budokai Tenkaichi 2, and how it was such a leap in quality in every shape possible compared to the original. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time we have a dialogue about Tenkaichi 2. Budokai Tenkaichi 2 was released one year after Tenkaichi 1, and this time around, Tenkaichi 2 was released on both the PS2 and Wii, which was a really solid move because now fans have two options to play the game. So what did Tenkaichi 2 provide as a sequel? A lot. My goodness, where do I start? The roster is twice as big as BT1, adding up to 129 characters. We get even more additional characters from the movies. Oh my gosh, is that Turtles? And for all the Frieza Soldier fans out there, guess what, you can play as Kui. Also, the Wii version had additional characters, and we have six new additional stages. Well, technically seven if you count the Wii version. We can run it up at Kami's house, ruin the Earth. Motherfucker, you will go ahead and run it up and ruin the planet Namek. You finally met your match! <laughs> You can now customize what outfit you want mid-match now too as well. We can also do in-game transformations and fusions now. Oh my. We also have team battles in a switch system. But the most noticeable change of them all. No, we're not gonna talk about you. We're saving you for another segue. It's the gameplay. Nah, I'm joking. The gameplay is actually pretty good. <laughs> Now, the last video, I mentioned how I did not like the way the gameplay functions in Tenkaichi 1 simply due to the fact that in terms of doing combos, a lot of them weren't real and didn't feel satisfied to do. Outside of doing level 1 smashes, level 3 charge smashes, which aren't real by the way, same with doing gut punches, those are also not real. That was your only way of really doing combos in that game. And in terms of opening your opponent outside of just doing key eye cannons, grabs, and charge smashes, they're slow. You still have to build the meter to even do it. And offense and just doing combos in that game just did not feel good. Well, the good thing is Tenkaichi 2 throws all those issues that I had out the park. For the most part, in terms of the characters' moveset, a lot of characters in Tenkaichi 1 play the same. This changes in Tenkaichi 2. This is where I feel like more characters start to have more of an identity. Starting with one of the biggest changes in this game, Tenkaichi 2 reworked a lot of characters' kits in terms of their rush attacks, their smash attacks, and how to just open your opponent up in general. Now characters have specific rush attacks, signature techniques and combat routes in general that are exclusive to their kit. Now you still have heavy finishers and key icons. Now you have the introduction of flying kicks, grounded slashes or sweeps, lift strikes which are essentially launchers, and you also have rolling hammer which turns the opponent around causing you to do more damage from the back. And you also have sways that we also get the introduction of step-ins which are used during the step-in barrier which has a lot of different applications and uses. Just to give you some examples, step-ins can be used to link two sets of rush attacks together. The startup of step-ins also has some invisibility which negates rush attacks. Step-ins can also be followed up by heavy finishers, lift strike, ground slashes, and counter stands. This is a much needed tool. Now, I'm sure you guys remember the smash gauge from Budokai Tenkaichi 1. Well, it still exists. However, it has gotten a huge overhaul. There are still three levels to smash attacks, but now we have a new mechanic called melee momentum. As you're doing rush attacks, the smash meter will start glowing. And during the peak momentum, when the meter starts flashing heavy, any non-key charge attack will come out a lot faster and the properties will change. So this goes for smash attacks, heavy finishers, key eye cannons, little strikes, and rolling hammers, making them damn near unreactable at times, which is crazy. And you can also combo into smash attacks a lot easier now, which is a super plus. 
This not only ups the ante and pressure, but more combo routes are possible due to this change. And we're only just scratching the surface here. Tenkaichi 2 also added more follow-ups to a lot of your routes in general. Smash attacks have additional follow-ups. Grounded slashes have follow-ups. Same thing with heavy finishers. The introduction of giant throws, which essentially you just grabbing your opponent from the ground. The same goes for dash smashes, key eye cannons, and even illusion slashes have follow-ups. Now all of it feels extremely good to pull off. Now, my favorite change, there are feints in Tenkaichi. For example, as we all know, there is a grab option in the Tenkaichi games. Well, what if I told you, you can faint your grabs, which also leads me to move cancels. Oh my gosh, I love this mechanic so much. And I feel like more people should talk about it. Move cancels are exactly how it sounds. Any non-key charge move can be canceled with any of your face buttons and there's so much to this now some characters this will cancel out into a counter stance this is a really good mix of option if you have the right amount of execution you can even implement this mechanic into your combos jager has an excellent video covering move cancels in the high level nature of budokai tenkaichi 2 so i recommend you checking him out if you want more details on this mechanic because i'm only just scratching the surface there's also a new defensive option, and that is Power Guard. It can reduce the damage of key supers, and it can allow you to guard against rush supers. Remember how I mentioned how they were unblockable in Tenkaichi 1? Well, they're not unblockable if you throw Power Guard. Now, mind you, it does cost key. You can get guard crush still, but you don't have to deal with the super. Next, let's talk about the max power changes. Key Blast Armor, which armor through Key Blast. We got the introduction of Violent Rush, you just mashing square <laughs> with rush attacks. You have Dragon Heavy, which puts you in a high damaging combo, which leads to a ender if you follow it up correctly. You also have more homing dashes and banishing attacks. Now, when we get to super dashes and super movement, that's when things get a little interesting because these two abilities are character specific. Makes you teleport during dash attacks and super movement allows you to do an unlimited amount of high speed motions or just teleports until your meter is down. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, you are able to transform, do fusions, and do switches, which are all really good changes they added to the game. And there's a lot of interesting tech they can use with these mechanics, including canceling animation cooldowns that can lead to follow-ups and really big damage. This may be a crazy take, I personally feel like I'm only scratching the surface to a lot of these system mechanics, but I do find them to be massive improvements compared to Tenkaichi 1. From a presentation standpoint, there's been a lot of improvements. From a graphic standpoint, there are better textures, better lighting, and better colors in both the stages and character models. Even the animations for supers and special moves have received the upgrade. If you look at Trunks' ultimate skill, from BT1 and compared to BT2, it is a noticeable difference. You have better animations, you don't have the weird blue and black overlay anymore, and it just looks cool overall. And same goes for the coloring for certain key blasts, like correcting Gogeta's Stardust Breaker to be the actual color instead of being a yellow blast. The UI and the aesthetic of the game did receive an upgrade as well. The battle UI looks a lot cleaner. Hell, even the menus look even better than before. You even have 2D drawn renders instead of the 3D models for the character select, which they do look good. And the menus for the different game modes really pop out and are even more dynamic than before. And I really love how each menu has a distinct theme. For example, if you go to the ultimate training mode, it's a direct reference to the early half of the Android saga where Vegeta was training at the Capsule Corp Gravity Chamber. We can go to the Ultimate Battle Z mode and that is a direct reference to Korin's tower. Each tower representing a different course. It's those small details that give the menu a lot of charm compared to the previous game. And the music. I'm here to test everyone's abilities. Here you'll fight against the computer. Go on and give us a good battle.
we have an actual original soundtrack that isn't ported from previous games. Takanori Arima, I don't know what you were cooking with back in the day, but whatever you was working on to make this soundtrack, it was OD. Tenkaichi 2's music has a mix of different genres of music. You have your traditional rock oriented tracks, then you have a little bit of orchestral melodies, you have your upbeat and atmospheric tracks here and there, and then what surprised me with the soundtrack for this game growing up was the amount of electronica and jungle drum and bass that were in some of these songs and it just really hit my soul. Songs like Lost Courage and Maze of Mind, ooh absolute bangers. And I love that type of music. And just to sum it all up, I really like the variety of genres that are in this soundtrack for this game. I do think that Tenkaichi 2 has one of the most diverse soundtracks in a Dragon Ball game outside of Super Dragon Ball Z and Budokai. It's definitely on the list and is easily one of my favorite soundtracks in a Dragon Ball game. Now let's talk about the content for Tenkaichi 2 because it expands on a lot of things. Now for the story mode or Dragon Ball Adventure mode, it improves a lot from the Z-Gay battle mode from BT1. Now the story mode is a lot more interactive and is pretty similar to how Budokai 3's Dragon Universe mode works where you can gather Z items, fight opponents to level up your character, and collect Dragon Balls and earn Zenny throughout the story mode. This mode covers Z, GT, but even more additional story arcs from the movies and the What If episodes. I think the biggest pros for BT2 story mode are much better cutscenes and just better content all around compared to Z Gate. It is somewhat less padded compared to BT1. Prime example, if you play BT1 story mode, you guys remember during the Saiyan Saga where the Z Fighters was training at Kami's Tower, that was like five separate battles where you want to go for 100% completion. In Tenkaichi 2, since they introduced team battles, that entire segment was just one fight, big improvement. And the music that plays before you start a battle in the story mode? Do you know how much adrenaline I get from this? Overall, a much better story mode. You got Ultimate Battle Z, which was the successor for Ultimate Battle, that adds more towers, different types of battles, and their own themes and win conditions that could range from survival, tag matches, or even 1v2 battles. You have Dragon Tournament, which for the most part still remains the same. Now there's five levels of difficulty for each tournament, and there is a new tournament called the World Martial Arts Big Tournament, where you face Bojack during the Grand Finals. Dueling still has the same functions, but now you can choose between single battles, tag Tag battles and free battles now where you can have up to five additional characters in one team. Ultimate training makes some really good quality of life changes to now. The tutorial mode gives you even more information and advice on both old and new mechanics and you can actually play during one of the demonstrations that they give you in the tutorial mode now. And the training mode also made some decent improvements as well. You can now set the level to what you want the CPU to be at without going to the options menu and having to change the difficulty there. You can now reset your position during training mode. God, I can't tell you enough how much I love this feature. And your command list has a lot more detail now. A little cluttered, but it gives you more information on your rush, signature techniques, and combo routes. Evolution Z still function the same, but with a lot more variety in Z items now. And now there is a item shop to where now you can buy items for both of the story mode, ultimate battle, or just customizing your character in general. And speaking of custom characters, they also introduced data center where you can enter a long and extremely complex looted password to get a max level custom character and if you have the ps2 copy of bt1 you can use spark fusion to gain extra rewards and then you have the dragon library which is essentially just a better version of the character illustration mode where except now you can view the character models of the synopsis of the sagas that occur in the dragon ball franchise and you can listen to the soundtrack for the game now all together the amount of content of Tenkaichi 2 was a massive leap in quality. It is much more enjoyable. Before things come to a close, there is something that I do want to talk about. So 
Y'all may or may not know this, but there is a Tenkaichi 2 competitive scene. It isn't as popular or as big as Tenkaichi 3, but it does exist. As I mentioned earlier in the gameplay section, there is a surprising amount of depth to the game. Seeing what these players can do at a high level is really cool. And I kid you not, there is an entire Tenkaichi 2 Bible on game facts that deep dives into the system mechanics going over the beginner intermediate and advanced mechanics to the game is wild there are legit in-depth guys going over the movement the combo systems and take that i would even imagine that it exists in tankaichi let alone an arena fighter throughout my childhood and hell even a few years ago i would assume that the tankaichi series was just a mashy arena fighter but with enough time and research that I've gained over these past few months, it really just set the bar and made me realize how technical Tenkaichi as a game can become. I just think it's a very underrated scene and if you want more info, I recommend you checking out these amazing content creators or even join the Discord if you're interested. To finish things off, Tenkaichi 2 is a huge upgrade from Tenkaichi 1 in all departments from gameplay to content to presentation and even music i think this game still aged pretty well and refined a lot of issues that i had with its predecessor by a large margin even taking my nostalgia glasses off i still think this game holds up to this day it makes me curious if i already have this strong feeling towards tenkaichi 2 how would i feel about tenkaichi 3